Hello, TMFA. Hi, guys. Dialect Coach Chris Lang here. It is Technique Tuesday, and you know what that means. Technique Tuesday means accent Q&A time. Also, a chance for me to discuss a piece of accent technique with y'all here on TMFA. Hope everybody's having a pretty good Tuesday. I know uh, the world is full of lots of trials and tribulations and fires and smoke and... Uh, political unrest and civil unrest and the global pandemic, but let us all take comfort and cheer from the fact that we get to be artists in this world. And we get to say things into this world to help change this world and change the people in it. So, um, just wanted to say that before we jump in and get started on everything else today. As always, my friends, pop your questions as soon as you have them into the chat so I can answer them. My goal here on TMFA uh, is to give you guys the best support possible in terms of your accent work and accent training throughout the course of your careers as you are building your career. Um, Wendy has asked me on here to, uh, to give you guys this kind of support and to be a resource for you in accent work. So anything that you have that comes up accent related, please pop that question down there into the comments. Um, could be related to what I'm talking about. It could not be related to what I'm talking about. That won't matter. I will detour in any direction needed to be able to get to your question. Um, so what am I going to be talking about today. Ah, um, <laughs> the title of this live video, I cheekily decided to title How to Do Accents. Um, okay, uh, kind of an homage to all those tips and tricks videos that you see out there on YouTube that, yeah, not all that helpful for you, the, the working actor, as you try to build your skill. Um, and yet, a title that is nonetheless apropos to what I'm going to be talking about today. How to do accents. Uh, the You know, we, when we talk about doing accents and accent training, we largely go through four different phases in our training. We start out with building awareness. We move into flexibility and mechanical control, the physical portion of it. We move into then coordination and flow, and finally accent identity integration out of that. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today is that third step, coordination and flow. Over the last couple of months, maybe three months in particular, I've been discussing a lot of vocal anatomy. We've talked through some exercises, lip stuff, musculature here, the tongue, its muscles, all of those sorts of things. But I want to talk about uh, what happens once we gain a certain control and facility with our physical selves. Once I'm able to say, yeah, I can do the thing with my tongue and my lips and I'm going to rearrange them all in this way, and I can do it on purpose when I would like to, what do I do then? What do I do then? Um, another way to put this, how can I trust the physical things that I'm experiencing in real time as I use my growing flexibility and awareness to begin to shape speech gestures into recognizable patterns, i.e. speech. Um, I talk a lot, you guys, in my private sessions with clients about building a kinesthetic memory of these processes and through that kinesthetic memory, building a trust and a habit of those physical experiences with targeting those to a specific accent. Um, the biggest question is how the heck do we do this? Um, let's go back to some of the stuff that I've talked about before. Um, and we've talked a lot of specifics in terms of physical sensation with lips. We've gone through lip muscles uh, and stuff like that. We've gone through tongue muscles. I've talked a little bit about the larynx and the glottis, your vocal folds, how they all work together. I know I've talked about why you can't listen to yourself, why you only have to feel your voice. I've talked a lot about all of this stuff, all right? Um, these are all really, really specific, kind of, I hesitate to call them minutia, but in a way they are, they're the details. They're the details of the stuff that we're working on. Um, if we were to try to attempt to micromanage all of the details, what would happen? That's how I want to, uh, you know, so pose my first question to you. And Patty Purcell is here. Patty, hello. Good to see you again. Um, glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. Um, pop question in the chat if you have one at any time here. Um, 
let's see, what are the, the micromanaging details? That's where I was. So what would happen if we had if we tried to micromanage all of this little detail work, all the little physical things that we've worked on, how we've structured them together, start working and playing with them together? What would happen if we tried to micromanage all those details and do them all at the same time? All right. And then what if we were trying to do all of that, micromanage all of those processes in real time while you're trying to speak in a new accent and while you're trying to be an actor at the same time? Realistically, my friends, you probably would be only partially successful at one of those things, whether that would be micromanaging the accent or acting. And you wouldn't be fully successful at any of them. You'd probably be partially successful at maybe one of them if you try to micromanage any of that process. All right? Um, so we have to do something. We have to give ourselves a gift in some way to, for us to be able to allow all of this detail stuff to take place simultaneously and to be able to adjust the details to ensure eventual accent mastery and authenticity. Um, so we have to have something that we can do that allows those things to happen. Um, Michael Bullard is here. Uh, he's, God bless you and your work. Thank you, Michael. That's very kind. Um, bless you as well. I really appreciate that. And that, that has lifted my spirits up this afternoon. Um, long day of coaching can sometimes feel weary. And Michael, you have just spoken some joy into my life. So thank you for that. I really, it really is much appreciated. And uh, Michael, like I said to Patty, any questions you have, pop it into the comments and I will answer it as I can. Um, so what is this process that we have to have in place that allows us to have details happen, have accent happen, and acting at the same time? What gives us the gift of being able to do this? All right. Um, there is a thing that I will often refer to, a concept as well as a practice, all right, that I will usually call vocal tract posture. Vocal tract posture. And yes, my friends, now that I've said it out loud, you are going to see it in color. I'm getting my colors out. I'm going to put it on a thing here. Vocal tract. Wait for it. It's happening. Final color. Posture. I think I spelled all of those words right. Vocal tract posture. What, pray tell, is vocal tract posture? All right, vocal tract posture, my friends, is going to be one of the most powerful tools I will ever teach you how to use. All right, outside of teaching you how to use your own instrument, become aware of your own instrument, become flexible with that awareness, become mechanically flexible with it as well. Outside of those things that you kind of learn about yourself, this vocal tract posture, this is like the, the silver bullet, in my opinion, as an accent trainer for actors. This is one of the biggest things that can help you find an accent quickly holistically and in a detailed way all at the same time that will allow you to use the accent as an asset for your acting. All right, vocal tract posture. Um, what is vocal tract posture? Everyone has this. I have this, you have this, your mother has this, your best friend's cousin's roommate's brother has this. Everyone on the face of the planet has a vocal tract posture. Every language comes with vocal tract posture, and every accent of every language also comes with vocal tract posture. This is the habitual series of tensions, releases, and alignments, all right, that exist in your vocal tract. Think of this as the home base for your accent, all right? This is the position to which your vocal tract would like to return when at rest. Vocal tract posture. Posture, important word, posture. All right? We often think of our bodies having posture, like I'm going to say I'm going to have tall posture and slouchy posture and crazy posture and jazz hands posture and, you know, whatever posture. All right? The challenge for us is mentally up here, posture. Posture is not a thing that you lock into. It's not how posture works. Posture 
is a phased movement, if you will. We are constantly moving in and out of and around of different phases of posture in our bodies holistically and little parts of our bodies too, including uh -huh, the vocal tract. So vocal tract posture is also this way. It's the home base for the vocal tract, all right, the place to which the vocal tract wants to return when at rest, but it's also not stuck. It's not like we put this, you know, series of physical adjustments on you and say, lock those in place and never move them again. Because that's not how real speech works and that's not how real physiology works, so we can't do that. What we can do is say that it, as long as we think of this vocal tract posture as like home, it's like the heart of the accent. It's home. We always come home. Always. We always get to come home. Or sometimes I'll describe it, it's like the sun. And all of the sounds of an accent orbit around the sun. They're always drawn towards the sun, but they leave and they always come back. All right, that's how we want to think of vocal tract posture. Um, think of it, in, you know, another way to think of this, I'm a musician, all right, I play drums, you see my drums back here, my gym bays on either side there, point them out here. <laughs> you can't see my drum kit set up in another room, but as a musician, and I play guitar and sing like that, yeah, I'm, uh, music is always in my brain. I talk a lot about music and accents. Um, and if we think of our bodies like an instrument, this is also very useful. So think about vocal tract posture this way. Let's imagine, for instance, my vocal tract posture. I am a French horn. So all of the sounds that come out of this instrument are French horn sounds. All right. Now, let's say my friend Jack. All right. My good friend Jack, who's an accent coach, I'll have him on, uh, awesome British accent coach. I'll bring him on to talk about RP and British accents sometime soon. But let's say my friend Jack is a clarinet. All the sounds that come out of his instrument will be clarinet sounds. Now, we can largely target the same kinds of notes, but the quality of the sound that comes out of that instrument, very, very different if it's a French horn versus a clarinet versus a tuba versus a violin versus any number of other kinds of instruments when, when which we can play notes. Does this make sense, my friends? If this makes sense, put it in the comments. If you have any questions about what I'm saying, put it in the comments. I want to know. Um, so vocal tract posture is really, really important for us to know about and to understand in our own experience, largely because we need to know what instrument we're playing. <laughs> Imagine now, if you will, a magical instrument. All right, the French horn, clarinet, tuba, saxophone, violin. All right, this is an instrument that can be molded and changed into any other instrument. That, my friends, is the instrument you possess as an actor. You possess an instrument that can be molded, changed, shaped into different kinds of instruments. So whether or not in your daily life, in your preferred accent, whatever music you're playing through whatever instrument you have, in my case, I called it a French horn. So let's say I have a French horn. If I alter the place that this sound gets to travel through here and create a new vocal tract posture for it, ah, now I can be a different instrument. So let's say this vocal tract posture here is that of a French horn. And let's say I want to turn it into a clarinet like my British friend Jack. So I'm going to have some jaw protrusion. I'm going to lift the back and middle of my dorsum of my tongue higher. I'm going to drop my R's and have a non-rhotic accent. And I'm going to let my lips round here rather more than they ordinarily do in my own accent. Now, the vocal tract posture gives us access to sounds of an accent. It doesn't necessarily do those sounds automatically, though you may find when you work with me and we put a vocal tract posture on your body that we was like, oh, some of the sounds just kind of showed up. Great. That's, that's how this is supposed to work. And that's why vocal tract posture is so important because this can be the thing that gets you from not having an accent in your mouth at all to having most of an accent in your mouth like that. Now imagine how important that is when you get that last minute accent audition that you have to turn in the self tape for tomorrow. You have to have an Icelandic accent and you've never done that before. It can be very, very useful and powerful tool in getting us there a little more quickly if we need to do that. But at the same time, it doesn't take care of the details. So it's not the whole thing. Uh, let me pause this. Um, 
Michael has a great question. Says, would you say it is a gift I have if I start talking to someone from Brooklyn and I'm from the South and then I start talking with the same dialect? Is this a gift I can use in my career as an actor? Michael, brilliant question. Very, very good question to ask. Is it a gift? Yes. Is it a unique gift? Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. Uh, what you're experiencing is what we, in the linguistic side of things, describe as code switching code switching. This is an opportunity for you when you show up in a place where the accents are different from yours. Your brain goes, hmm, we don't really fit in here, do we? We don't sound like all these other people. And your brain says, hmm, maybe we ought to try something so it can, can fit in. Our brains are built for collaboration. Mirror neurons in your brain. Their sole purpose is to copy things that they see, hear, feel, and touch. All right? You want to copy them. Your brain wants to copy accents. It's predisposed to do that. It's how you know that you are part of a tribe when you show up or not. If you sound like the people there or don't, that's how you'll know if you're part of that tribe. So your brain says, well, let's copy that so we can belong here. So everyone's brain does this to some extent. Some of us are more open to it than others just because of, I mean, a myriad of reasons why this could be the case. <laughs> so lots and lots of different reasons why that would be the case. However, if you are more predisposed to do this and you do have, start to have flexibility, you can use this and tap into the, one of the biggest muscles you possess as an actor, which is your, your, your muscle of empathy. All right? You can use this gift to want to absorb another person's accent to discover what's it like for them to have the identity that they do that carries with it this other accent. In this case, in your, uh, in your example, Brooklyn accent. What's it like to have the identity in life that was created in such a way that I came out with this Brooklyn accent? Huh. You have a big empathy muscle that you can tap into there. And that, my friend, Michael, is going to help you when you get the audition or book the role where you need the Brooklyn accent. Because now you already have the empathy built to tap into this identity to start crafting the accent and the character at one time. So yes, it is a big gift that you could use in your career, but this must be used wisely. And, and by wisely, I mean you, you, you need to know that it's happening when it's happening, you need to be able to tap into it when it's happening and notice things, become aware of it. And then you also need to be able to say, this is just the beginning, all right? I still need to go into vocal track posture. I still have to deal with details and sounds and things of that nature. Still have to deal with all of this stuff, all right? So it is a way in. It's a pretty powerful way in, to be honest. Again, because it taps into your empathy, which is one of the biggest muscles outside of imagination that an actor possesses, our empathy muscle. So, um, great question, Michael. Good question. And another Michael, Michael Houston, ironically, is from Brooklyn, he says. Michael Houston from Brooklyn. I love it. That's how I like my irony served today, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Michael... Houston, that is, <laughs> from Brooklyn. Uh, one of my favorite accents on this planet, Brooklyn accents. Um, fell in love with it long time ago. It's a great, great accent. Um, Michael Bullard, from the South, I guess, says, I used it in an audition I had a while back when they needed me to speak in a Russian accent and the director was happy with it, although the movie didn't happen because of funding. I was listening to Russian dialects. Yeah, so mimicry is really what this is. Mimicry. Mimicry is, like, if, my friends, if you have the ability to mimic, all right, that is awesome. And it's such a good, good way into accent work. Let's remember this, though. It is not enough to be a good mimic. It's not enough. It is not sufficient to be a good mimic. Good mimicry can get you there, but not on purpose. It can get you there and you'll sort of say, I think I kind of sort of got it a little bit enough-ish. But you'll never have the details you'll need. You'll never understand this as much as you need to. Mimicry just doesn't get us all the way there. Mimicry gets us a lot of the way there sometimes, but it's only by accident, really. We don't have a way to trust the things that we're doing to mimic yet. We have to have a good physical underpinning of skill and technique to be able to trust all of that. So that when you do mimic something, you can go, ooh, what did I do to make that happen? 
Oh, I did this. Great. Now I know, and I can do it every time in that same way. All right. That's a big deal. Which brings us back to vocal track posture. Physical things you can do every time to make the accent land, to get into the world of the accent, the land in your vocal track in which the sounds of the accent live. Okay. Um, let's see here. Oh, let me check my notes before I, I forget what I was talking about. Um, great. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. That's where I was. <laughs> Got to check my notes, y'all. I get distracted by awesome, awesome questions and then I get lost, but that's fine. Much love. Good questions. Um, so vocal track posture. Another way I've said this, I've said home you know, default position, things like that. Home base is a word I use a lot. It's really two words, isn't it? Home base. Hyphenated, eh, then it's one word. Home base, <laughs> all right? It, it creates a home base for the accent to emerge from. That gives us access to the sound inventory of the accent. Um, think back to, boy, I'm trying to remember when I did this video. It's it a few weeks ago for sure, maybe last month, beginning of last month. I did a uh, Facebook Live on a hesitation sound. Hesitation sounds can tell us what your vocal tract posture is. Because when we hesitate, uh, uh, what's next? Uh, my vocal tract has returned to a default resting position in between things to say. So our hesitation sound can tell us a lot about uh, what our vocal tract posture is. It can definitely do this. So in fact, let's find out what our hesitation sound is, shall we? Let me take you through this quick exercise, friends. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions to which you can answer no. Except instead of going no, you're gonna go mm-mm, mm-mm. So just put, touch your lips together and just easily vocalize mm-mm. Mm -mm. All right, we'll try this now. Um, okay, series of questions to which you may answer no. Is this a red marker? Mm -mm. Are these sunglasses? Mm -mm. Is my shirt orange? Mm -mm. Is the sky usually blue? Not a no question. Ah, 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 tripped you up there. Okay. So what happened when I tripped you up? Probably some sort of a sound got pulled out of you. That was not an, it was like, uh, 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 something along those lines probably happened, a version of that. So let's try this again, except now you can answer the affirmative to some questions, and we'll just go, uh-huh. So now your mouth can be open. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Is this a blue marker? Uh-huh. Is my name Chris? Uh-huh. Is today Tuesday? Uh-huh. Is TMFA the best? Uh-huh. Is this a magenta marker? Uh-huh. Okay. You didn't have to think about it. It just kind of these sounds got, uh-huh, pulled out of you in agreement. Now, what if I asked you a series of questions to which you did not know the answer easily and you had to think about them? So just allow whatever sound to get pulled out of your body in this way. So, for instance, if I asked you, I'm going to write this question down. Writing it down. What is 23,137 times 18,214? Just solve it in your head, no calculators. Really try to solve it. Um, uh, 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 okay, all right, all right, all right, all right forget that now. Uh, second question. The last 10 movies that you have seen in, can you list them please? just for, out loud for yourself, in reverse alphabetical order. Reverse alphabetical order. Go. Uh, um, uh, uh, new mutant.
mutants. Uh, uh, oh no, no, Tenet. Uh, New Mutants. Uh, uh, all, right, all right, pause that for a second. Okay, last question that may be hard. Um, in your kitchen right now, the number, uh, how many pieces of cutlery all told do you have? Knives, forks, spoons, sharp knives, cutting knives, steak knives, spatulas, spoons, whatever. Total pieces right now in your kitchen. Go. How many are there? Uh, and be exact. Uh... Uh, I think I have 97. All right. What sound got pulled out of you? For me, you could hear it's this, uh, uh, kind of thing. Uh, all right. That's my general American vocal tract posture, friends. Released jaw, released kind of unrounded lips, low, flattish, even tiny little bit of a cup tongue there in the middle. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, that's my hesitation sound. That's my thinking sound. That is my vocal tract posture. The VTP, everybody. Vocal tract posture. What's yours? What hesitation sound did you have? It's all going to depend on what your preferred accent is. All right? If my preferred accent was British accent, it might be, uh, um, uh. Or if I was a Scottish accent, I have a, a wonderful client in Edinburgh who, when he hesitates, um, Chris, he says, uh, um, don't know, uh, this is like that, uh, different than mine, uh, if I was doing my West Texas accent, uh, I get an uh, uh, kind of thing out of it, uh, right? What is yours? If I was a, if there's a French accent, uh, uh, and you can see each one of these that I'm doing it, y'all, I'm actually changing the alignment of my vocal tract, or I am changing, wait for it, the posture of my vocal tract. <laughs> All right, that's what we're dealing with here. This is how vocal tract posture gives us access to the sound inventory of an accent. This is how it happens. All right. Um, so vocal tract posture gives us the ability to feel large wholesale changes of my vocal tract while at the same time helping me to feel the small detailed movements of my vocal tract and at the same time giving me access to the sound inventory of the accent, allowing me to essentially just let it rip, set it free, see what's there, see how much easier it will be to gain access to the sounds of this accent with the vocal tract posture. That way then this guy up here can be all in on my acting. And I can, the, the uh, accent then becomes a physical, almost exclusively physical experience. Feeling vocal tract posture, feeling sounds, feeling detailed movements. So this guy can be after, ooh, what do I want in this scene? Give me what I want. Going after what I want. Being ruthless and relentless and uh, really getting after what you want in the scene. Because ultimately that's what acting, good acting needs to have in it. Relentless pursuit of objective whilst living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. So this lets us do the accent stuff, freeing up our higher faculties for that pursuit. So that acting can be more satisfying, so that acting and accent can be more satisfying. All right, my friends, um, that's about all I have to say about it today. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, please put them in the comments for me, and I will circle back and see them. Before I leave, though, know this. The online actors retreat hosted by Union Management UK all right, is coming up in October. Uh, Dan Clifton uh, at Union Management has told me that spots are filling up. If you want to sign up, all right, it is very reasonably priced. You gain access to five days of industry experts um, in casting, in acting, myself, in management, in uh, entertainment law, things of this nature, all of it to you online, on Zoom. It's gonna be a wonderful experience. I recommend it highly. On Sunday night, the last night of the online actors retreat, there will be a, an industry panel featuring myself, I'll be there, and Wendy Allen Wright will be there. 
So you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to hear Wendy spout some awesome, awesome, mind-blowing knowledge. And, uh, and I'll be there too. Maybe I'll blow your minds as well. We'll see. I'll try. Um, but please do sign up. Uh, if you want to go, the, um, oh, I, you know, I had it here in front of me. I'm going to put the thing, <laughs> I'll put the link in the comments as soon as we're done here. Um, and, uh, and we'll go, oh gosh, there's some questions here that I missed. I'll get to those in a second. Um, but online actors repeat, please, please, please sign up. You will thank yourself for making that investment. It's very reasonably priced and you'll get a lot out of it. Um, and we'll be able to talk about it later too be like a little club that we're in that we can all chat about. Uh, but the online actors retreat. Also this, if you want to know more about vocal track posture, yours, a target accents vocal track posture, and how to mold your instrument into a flexible accent machine, talk to me. My website is www.dialectcoachchrislang.com. Please go there, talk to my very friendly chat bot, um, leave your information and schedule a time uh, through my online scheduler there where we can have a free 20 minute Zoom consultation call. All right, I want to help you level up your career and gain more accent, more, more casting opportunities through accents. More accents, more casting opportunities, plain and simple. More casting opportunities, more times on set, more times on set, more money in bank accounts, careers. Okay, so. Make sure you're on the right trajectory there. Please do reach out, dialectcoachchrislang.com. Uh, we will talk about everything, uh, all your questions in our consult call, including, but not limited to, accent skills. These are the things that I will encourage you to learn that are the basis for all of accent work. And if you are interested in taking that workshop, go to courses.dialectcoachchrislang.com to sign up for my online, on-demand, six weeks accent skills workshop. All right, normally priced at $2.97 for all six weeks. You can have it for 20% off with the coupon code only for TMFA, social distance, all one word. All right, my friends, go sign up. I want you to level your careers up. I am here to help you. So please do reach out. You are never bothering me with questions. Ever, ever, ever. And just to prove it, Patty's question here in the comments, what's the difference between dialect and accent? I love it. One of my favorite questions. Oh, and uh, Yolanda, thank you for putting the, the thing, the link to my website in the comments. Much appreciated. Um, difference between a dialect and an accent. An accent, all right, is a unique way of speaking that's kind of endemic to a people, place, or society. All right. Um, talking about accents like British accents, American accents, etc., etc. A dialect is going to be that plus word choice. Ah, yeah. So a dialect is a little bit different. Now, in this industry, I want you to get used to hearing accent and dialect used interchangeably. I myself do it all the time. But linguistically, it's important sometimes that we have that distinction. So an accent is a unique way of speaking. A dialect is that plus word choice. Wonderful. Um, oh, Michael says, I just joined, <laughs> Michael Houston, rather, uh, can I discuss vocal posture if I don't mind again? Vocal track posture, the home base for your accent. All right, the position at which your vocal track is, uh, likes to be when at rest, gives you access to the sound inventory of your accent. All right, and every accent and language is a different one, so we have to learn how to mold this instrument into a different kind of instrument. But go back and watch the, the rest of the video at the beginning, Michael, and if you have any questions, then come to my website, fill out my info with the chat bot, and you and I will schedule a Zoom consultation call where we can talk about all your questions. Um, Oh, <laughs> Michael Bowen says, that's why I need to be able to learn from you and your training when I can afford it, because you seem like an expert to me. Yeah, um, I am an accent expert, uh, as it turns out. And um, the, one of the reasons Wendy has me on here is because she wants to be sure you are getting actual professional expert accent advice for your acting career, and not stuff from what we usually call in the industry as helpful hobbyists. These are very well-meaning people, probably an actor who was really good in their speech class in college, and had some facility with accents and sort of hung up their shingle and said, yeah, I could help a couple friends with accents here and there. And so starts doing that, but isn't really a professional accent coach, does not have the linguistic storytelling, like 
uh, myriad skills you need from phonetics to linguistics to socioeconomic linguistics to uh, storytelling to directing, et cetera, et cetera, all of this stuff. Um, you know, it takes a long time to, to build a skill set to be a professional accent coach. So we want to protect you in a way against helpful hobbyists. Um, if you're looking for an accent coach, please come to me. You can also go to Pamela Vanderway at dialectcoaches.com. She's a wonderful, wonderful industry leader. Her one goal in this business is to make sure that you get the right accent coach for you and that every production gets the right accent coach for them so that they can be as successful as possible. Pamela and I have been working together for, God, uh, six or seven years now, I think. <laughs> so, uh, fantastic resource. You can come to me, you can check in with Pamela. If you're here watching me, I assume you want to talk to me. So come to my website, talk to my chat bot, we'll schedule a time to call. Um, also, if you just want to dive into accent skills, courses.dialectcoachchrislang.com. Use the coupon code social distance for 20% off. All right, go do that now. You'll thank yourself that you made the investment. My friends, have a very, very happy Tuesday and a great rest of your week. If you're suffering from any of the fires or the smoke or anything, I feel you where I'm based, a bunch of wildfires around here. Uh, it's been kind of miserable, so solidarity on that. Just stick tough, stay inside, drink lots of water. If you need to travel in the car somewhere up in the high country, if you can, or out in the, you know, the fields of grass somewhere out in the plains to get away from the smoke do it for at least a couple days if you can you'll thank yourself if you have the ability to do that if not sit tight this too shall pass i'm in it with you um if you have any topics you want me to talk about next week's tmfa uh technique tuesday on my facebook live pop them in this comments i will address that topic next week i'm gonna make sure you guys get your questions answered so until we meet again my friends much love i will see you all on the facebooks and the interwebs and my website. Ciao.